Rachel. <laughs> well, we both got, we're just a little embarrassed. We both got teared up with the video. I told Sherrod, I'm going to know more people in this room than any room I go to in Washington. Hi, guys. Hi, y'all. It's so good to see all of you. <laughs> This is such an honor to us. Um, I want to tell you a little bit why. In 2004, many of you know this, um, in Ohio, uh, we passed the worst anti-gay legislation or referendum in the country. It was called Issue 1. And a few days after that vote, we went to our church, Pilgrim United Church of Christ in Tremont, the neighborhood of Tremont in Cleveland. Some of you know that area. And in the beginning of the service, um, first the volunteer director who was collecting money for toys for kids and uh, gifts for kids for Christmas got up and gave a little talk. And then um, the medical director, who was also helping with that drive, the medical director of the free clinic in Cleveland got up. And then the choir director led us in a chant. Um, remember that? It was kind of a canter. And then uh, Pastor Kate Huey, the pastor who married us, got up and talked about the importance of pledging. And then the head pastor, Lori Hafner, got up and she said, I want to talk to you about what happened to us. I want to talk about issue one. And she said to the, the whole congregation, we are united with you. We, we do not believe you can legislate love. And even though you've had a message of hate in Ohio, um, we want you to know that we still love you. And then she asked everyone who was directly affected by this legislation, this pending legislation, to stand up. So the guy who led the toy drive stood up. The medical director of the free clinic stood up. The choir director, who was also my daughter's guidance counselor, stood up. And then the pastor who led the pledge drive and who had married us, Pastor Kate Huey, stood up. And then, and as we looked at, there were about 50 or so in our congregation standing, and I'll never forget my husband turning to me. And he said, oh my God. And he said, oh my God, we were just looking around us. And they didn't look angry or resentful, they just looked defeated. And then it dawned on us that we all needed to stand up because we were all directly affected by the passage of issue one. And it was a really um, scary time for us because we didn't want to believe this about our state. We didn't want to believe this about the people we lived with. And I actually, the, of the Pulitzer columns, that was one of the columns in that package. Um, but I'm so proud of what's happened in Ohio since. Um, about less than two years later, they tried to pass legislation in the state house. It was introduced to ban gay adoptions and a conservative who had been adopted. Don't you love how that happens? Hey, whatever gets them there. <laughs> <laughs> Said this would be wrong to punish children. And then this week, we just found out that we are going to host, Cleveland's going to host the 2014 Gay Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> I expect you all to be there. I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to wear, but we'll talk later. So I, this says two things, and I know the one thing it says. It says, boy, businesses get it, right? Businesses stepped up. But here's the other thing. Businesses have stopped being afraid of those who don't get it. And that's the big news for us in Cleveland and Ohio. It is the death rattle of a dying dragon. I say that everywhere I go, and I believe it. So thank you. She is absolutely the storyteller in the family, thank you. <laughs> um, Tammy Baldwin, thank you wherever you are, and Joe and all of you, and um, thanks very much. Tammy's back there. Hi, Tammy. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I'm as honored as Connie is by this. Thank you for honoring her, and thank you for honoring me, and I appreciate the only elected official, non-elected official that you're honoring is the greatest writer I know and the most wonderful woman I know, so thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, wanna, I, I won't talk long. I want to tell one story. And first of all, I, I first want to thank you for your activism. And I, I, um, I know that, that, that you have, every time I've run for office, you've had my back. I know that, that nobody fights for, for justice. Nobody fights for human rights. Nobody fights for civil rights um, like all of you do. I know a lot of people in this audience, and I know that you live that way and you work that way, and I'm so thankful for that for what it means to people who are less bold and less activist than you. So thank you for that. Uh, but I want to tell one real quick story. Connie and I have only been married um, five, five plus years. 
Um, we met because she started writing a column for the Plain Dealer. And if you want to look at her columns, it's cleveland.com, Connie Schultz. <laughs> and you've, most of you have seen her columns on the internet because they're sent all over the place because they're, they're so damn good. But anyway, but um, I started reading her columns and so I emailed her and I had the greatest suck up line of all time because I said, I, where did the Plain Dealer find you? Ed Fian understands it. Where did the Plain Dealer find you? And I said, you, you remind, your writing reminds me of Barbara Kingsolver, which was a great suck-up line. <laughs> but then, so we emailed back and forth and for a couple months, and I, for probably three, three, four weeks, then I asked her out. And I didn't know until later that she, before she agreed to go out with me, she checked my vote on DOMA. <laughs> that is absolutely true. And she checked my votes on choice. And she found that my record on HRC issues was 100%, and my record on NARAL was 100%. So she went out with me, and then she married me. So thank you all. <laughs>